Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Muhammad Moinul Islam Khan. I am from Islamic University of Technology, also known as IUT. In this video, I will demonstrate an 8051 microcontroller based project that has been developed by my friends Sabiha Sharmi, Sadbir Ahmed, Sanjita Ali, Mohibul Islam, Jubair Alam, Pariam Hejabin, Tasnim Zaman, and me. We built this project in our sixth semester as a part of our microcontroller lab. In this project, we developed a calculator that can take two inputs from the keypad and perform arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division between them. At first, we developed a code for the microcontroller and tested the code in a software environment using Proteus. Then we went for hardware implementation. One may think that the 8051 microcontroller has built-in functions to do these arithmetic operations. So what's so special about this project? Well, we all know that 8051 microcontrollers can perform these arithmetic operations between two inputs using the built-in functions only when each of the inputs is between 0 to 255. That is, each input can have a maximum of eight binary bits. It cannot deal with higher numbers by using the built-in functions. We have developed our calculator in a way that the inputs can consist of one to four digits. That is, each input can have a maximum of 32 binary bits. Also, our calculator is capable of showing negative results for subtraction. In this video, I'll show these operations both in hardware and software. This video has four segments. In the first segment, I will illustrate the connections of the microcontroller in Proteus. Then I will, I will also demonstrate all the arithmetic operations in software simulation in the second segment. The third segment will be about the physical connection in the hardware. In that segment, I will also perform the arithmetic operations in hardware. Finally, in the last segment, I will explain the algorithm of this project. So without further ado, let's start with the Proteus segment. So here we have designed our calculator using Proteus 8 simulation software. For this purpose, we have used 889C51 module, which is the microcontroller. We have included this crystal oscillator to provide clock pulse to the microcontroller. Note that we don't need to provide such connection in hardware since our microcontroller kit already has these connections by default. Then we have used this module called LM016L, which is the LCD displays. Now, as we can see, the pins D0 to D7 of this LCD are connected to the port 1 of the microcontroller. Then the RSRWE, these three pins of the LCD is connected to the pin nong 2.0 to 2.2 of the microcontroller. Positive 5 voltage is applied to the VDD and VEE pins of the LCD, and the VSS is grounded. Uh, note that these three connections, that is VSS, VDD, VEE, are not necessary in case of hardware connections because these connections are given by default. So while connecting the LCD to the microcontroller in hardware case, we only need to connect the D0 to D7 and RSRW E pins. Now, as you can see, we have connected a four by four keypad to the microcontroller. The rows of the keypad are connected to the pins P0.0 to 0 0.3, and the columns are connected to P3.0 to P3.3. And we have also connected a register pack with the rows and the columns like this way. Now, if we can have a clear look at the keypads, we can see we have zero to nine, all the digits, plus, minus, multiplication and division sign and equal. And this button E works as clear. So it will clear the LCD display when pressed. So now we'll see how to load the code into this microcontroller module. To do that, all we have to do is double click on this module. Then uh, in the program file section, you can see a browse button here. So we can click the browse button. Then we can select the hex file, then click open, then press OK. So the code is loaded into the microcontroller. Now let's go to the simulation of this project. Before starting the simulation, I will just drag the LCD closer to the button 
and then zoom on in a little bit. I think that's enough zooming. Now we will start the simulation by pressing this triangle button here. So if we press this button, we can see the LCD is turned on and a cursor has arrived here. Now we will do some arithmetic operations. Let's start with addition. Say we want to add the numbers 6393 and 3638. So let us input the first number using the keypad. The first number is 6393. We want to add this number with 3638. Now if we press equal, we can see the result in the second line of the LCD which is 10031. Now let's do some subtraction. Say uh, we want to subtract 3893 from 6985. So input the first number 6985 minus 3893. The result should be 3092 and yes it is 3092. So here we get a positive result because we have subtracted a smaller number from a larger one. So let's do the opposite thing. Subtract a bigger number from a smaller one. Say our first input is 5836. We minus from it 9983. So the result should be minus 41. Four, seven. Now we will do a multiplication operation. Say we want to multiply 3683 by 3065. So our first input will be 3683. We multiply it by 3065. We press equal and see that the result is this huge value, uh, which we can verify by using any other calculator. Now let's move on to the division section. Now we input our first number, nine, eight, two, three, and divide it by five, six, double, zero. So the result shows is one. Why it is showing one? because the actual result is 1.75 something since the microcontroller can't deal with fractions the result of the division is always the floor value of the actual result so the actual result is 1.75 the floor value of which is one so we are getting one here uh, let's say we want to divide a smaller number by a larger number so we divide say three zero five six divided by 8509 we press equal and see that the result is zero why so because the result of this division is actually 0 0.36 since the floor value of 0 0.36 gives us zero so microcontrol is showing us zero so now we have seen the simulations now let's move on to the hardware segment First, we will see the connections of the microcontroller kit. Here we can see there are eight wires that are connected to the LCD D0 to D7 pins. These eight wires comes out from the D0 to D7 and then they are going to the port number one of the microcontroller. Then these three wires, they are coming from the RS, RW enable pin of the LCD and goes into the pin nong 2.0 to 2.2 of the microcontroller. Now, these four wires are coming out of pin nong 3.0 to 3.3, and then they are going into the columns of the keypad. And four wires from the keypad rows are going into a breadboard. In the breadboard, the four rows are connected to four ends of resistors and pin 0 0.0 to 0 0.3. These four resistors are connected into a common point where 5 volt supply is given from the microcontroller. Now, 
we will do the arithmetic operations that we have seen in the simulation. At first, we need to turn on the microcontroller by pressing this white button here. So after pressing this button, we can see that uh, LCD has turned on and the cursor has appeared. So now we will do the arithmetic operations. We will start with the addition that we have seen in the simulation. So we input the exactly same two inputs. Then we press equal and we can see that the same result is shown. To do the next calculation, we need to press the clear button, which will clear the LCD. And the LCD is clear. So now let us see the rest of the calculations one by one. So this concludes our hardware segment. So we will just turn off the microcontroller by pressing the white button once again. This is the last segment of our video where I will be discussing the algorithm of this project. So where is the code of this project? Coding was done using assembly language. As you can see that the whole code is of around 900 lines. So I will not explain the program line by line. Rather, I will give the generalized idea about the whole working principle of this project. So before starting the discussion on the algorithm, let me show how to convert this .asm file into a machine readable .x code file that we needed to load in the microcontroller in Proteus. So all you need to do is go to this build section and press this build button. So after pressing, if there is no error in the code, then it will show a message that no, no errors. Then it will show another message that dot hex file has been generated in the location where this ASM file is saved. Then we can use this hex file to run our simulation in Proteus. Now let's see a flowchart to have an overall idea of the algorithm. When the program starts, the program checks whether the user has pressed any key or not. And it, it keeps waiting for the user to press any key. Whenever the user presses any key, the microcontroller prints the pressed key in the LCD. Then it goes for checking whether any operator plus, minus, multiplication or division was pressed or not. If any of them was pressed, then it is stored in a memory location. Then the microcontroller converts the previously pressed digits into a single number, then stores it and then again checks for key press. If the pressed key was not in the operator, then it checks whether equal was pressed or not. If equal was pressed, then it converts the previously pressed digits into a single number, stores it, then checks the previously stored operator, does the corresponding operation, displays the result, then goes for key press checking again. If equal was not pressed, then it checks whether AC was pressed or not. AC means clear here. So if the clear button was pressed, then it clears all the memories, then goes for key press checking again. 
if clear was not pressed then it is obvious that the user have pressed any digit because the pressed digit is not any operator not equal or clear so the pressed digit is stored in the memory then the program goes for keep is checking again so in this process the calculator project works now i will explain how the four pressed digits are converted into a single number and how is it stored here the key press is detected and it is stored in a the ascii code of the digits are 30h to 39h so after a key press a will have any value between 30h to 39h then 30h is detected from it to make the data inside a between 0h to 9h so here the a will have the key press data r6 r1 r0 registers will keep track of the memory locations and the data inside them the press digits will be stored in 50h to 57h memory locations then 60h to 63h these four memory locations will be used to store inputs 60h and 61h will consist input 1 and 62 and 63 will consist input 2 where 63 and 61 will be the higher bytes and uh, 62 and 660 will be the lower bytes and the operator location will be stored in 70h so initially r1 has 60h and r0 has 51h values inside them and all other memory locations have zero inside them now say the user has pressed 5 so the register a will have 35h inside it then after subtracting 30 from it it will have 5h inside it now what it will do it will give this 5h value to r6 so r6 will now have 5h then it will take 50h and 51h memory location data and multiply it by 10 so since it is zero after multiplying it will be same as before zero then it takes 52 and 53 multiplies it by 10 then stores in in this location then same goes for 54 and 55 then 56 and 57 these two are multiplied by 10 and then stored in same locations after multiplying the all the memory locations by 10 this value of r6 is stored into the location indicated by the register r0 which is 51h so this 5h goes to 51h so 51h memory location data is now 5h after that r0 is increased by 2 which makes it 53h then when the next key is pressed the same process is repeated that is say we have pressed 3 so a will have 3h in it after subtracting 30 then this value 3h will be given to r6 r6 will have 3h then all these values of 50 to 57 memory locations will be multiplied by 10 so since these are zeros so they will remain zero then multiplying these two will give us 00h and here we'll get 32h then this r6 value will be moved into the memory location indicated by r0 which is 53 so 53 memory locations now has 03h and then r0 increased by 2 so it becomes 55h this uh, process repeat four times since we press four digit inputs after pressing four digits so what happens then so we have pressed the operator plus so when this is pressed the ascii code of this operator which is 2b hexadecimal is stored at 70h location now what the program does it adds the data inside the memory locations 57 55 53 51 and then stores the value inside the memory location indicated by r1 which is 60 so the summation of this 88h 2ch 28h and 06h is stored inside 60h so 60h becomes e2 decimal then the r1 value is increased by 1 so it becomes 61h after that the program now adds data inside the memory locations 56 54 52 and 50 in the decimal and the result of this addition is stored inside 61h memory location it will be 14 hexadecimal after doing that r1 gets increased again so it it is now 62h so now 
then the microcontroller looks for the second input. So let's say our second input is 1997. So when we give these inputs, our memory locations have this data. Now, like before, data is inside 57, 55, 53, 51. Memory locations are added together and then stored in the memory location indicated by R1, which is 62H. So their addition gives us CD hexadecimal. Then 56, 54, 53. 52, 50 memory location data are added. Before that, R1 is increased by 1, so it becomes 63H. Then the added result will be stored inside the memory location indicated by R1, which is 63H. So here goes 07H. Now we have our two inputs in four memory locations, and the desired arithmetic operation that we need to perform is stored here. When we will press equal, then the program will check for these 70H memory locations and see what our data it has. Based on the data, the calculator will do the mathematic operations and generate the result. So the result will be stored in four memory locations, uh, which are 71H to 74H, where 74H has the MSB and 71H has the LSB. Note that we need four memory locations because if we do a multiplication operation between two four digit decimal numbers, the result will need to be stored inside four memory locations. So we use four memory locations for all the operations. Now comes the most important part how the result that is stored inside four memory locations as hexadecimal numbers are converted into decimal numbers. How that can be done using SMP language? Let's see. Here, four memory locations have all the result data. So, four memory locations have hexadecimal data. So, they will consist of 32 bits. Now, here, 71H has the LSB and 74H has the MSB. Now, what we will do, we will take the data inside the 71H memory locations, then rotate the bits right through carry. And we'll keep rotating until we get one in the carry. And we'll keep track by the register R6 that which bit is giving us carry one. So as you can see in this case, let's say our data was 003390 in terms of hexadecimal. So the binary bits are like this. And initially carry was zero, R6 was zero. Now after rotating by five times, we get carry equals to one. So after five times rotation, our R6 value becomes four. Now we will run a case conditions based on the R6 value whenever we will get carry equals to 1. So since R6 is equals to 4, we will go to case 4. Now we know that the positional value of the fifth bit in any binary number is 2 to the power 4 is equals to 16. So what we do, we add the LSB6 to a memory location 50H and we add the MSB1 to the memory location 51H. Let's say if our positional value was of three digits, then we would have added the LSB to 50H, then the next bit to 51, and the last one to 52H. Now, in case of four by four calculations, our max result can be four nines into four nines, which will give us a result of triple nine eight triple zero one in decimal, which is a seven digit number in hexadecimal. So seven into four, bits equals to 28 binary bits will be needed to represent that result. That means that our maximum result will have 28 bits and not more than that. So we include the 28 cases. Now the positional values of the 28 bit is a nine digit decimal number. So we need total nine memory locations, which we select as 50H to 58H, where 50H will consist of the LSB and 58H will have the MSB. So in this way, our calculator converts the data stored in 71H to 74H, then stores them uh, by rotating through all binary bits. Then the result is stored in these memory locations. Then the data is extracted from these memory locations and displayed in the LCD. In this way, our calculator works. This project is already uploaded in my research kit profile and the link is given in the description below. Anyone interested in this work can request the files via research kit. Thank you everyone for watching this video.